the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This morning I woke up with pastor's text. And the text said exactly. It says, as we prepare to cross over into 2016, always remember your best days are ahead, are ahead. And the worst days are behind you. How many of us have worst days behind us? Amen. Today we are going to jump up and glorify the name of the Lord. We are not here to sing you a special number. We are here to praise the Lord with you. So we'll all be the choir together. Everybody, let's rise up and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest.
we just thank you. We just thank you, oh God. We thank you for the year, oh God, that has passed, oh God. We thank you for the one we are stepping into, oh God. We are stepping into 2016 with style. I don't know who's stepping into it with style. But I, hey, hey, I am stepping into it with style. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to thank the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, I thank you. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all that you have done in the year 2015, Lord, I Let's just worship him. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the one who is and is to come. The one who has watched over you from January till now. Five seconds of your time to just lift up your hands and worship him is not too much. Five seconds of your time just to stand up and say, Lord, I appreciate you for what you have done. I don't think it's too much to ask of you. Let's just go ahead and bless him. I want you, whatever language you speak, just go ahead and just thank him. Thank him. Magnify him. Magnify the Lord this morning. He's worthy of every of our praise. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Blessed be the name of the living God. We worship your God. We worship your God. We worship your God. We worship your God. Oh, just go ahead and bless him. Go ahead and bless it. Oh, basuko pori ande gederi amo shende gede. Le brege dos yombo shanda gataya. Nana we mie kamo. Just go ahead and just worship the Lord. We worship you, O oh God. Come on, we worship you. We exalt you, Lord. What all you have done, O oh God, in our eyes. Dimbre zubori ande gede. Jebo bobo si ande gedo. Le brege dos kondo goria. Le bra ba 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 ba. Rakato si ande gedo. Zegire bori amo lombra gade Rege ge 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 Hoshkando si ande gede Le brege dushko mo si ande gade I worship you God Oh thank you Father Tamu na priye 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 Tamu na priye 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 Sing 
Let me quiet. Mona, pray, pray, pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving me life. Oh, 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 Pray, 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 oh, Tamara, pray, 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 Tamara, pray, pray, sing woke up this morning and that's what the Lord told me. He said my best days are still ahead of me and my worst days they are behind me. Get ready, get ready ladies and gentlemen. Something big, something great, something wonderful, something miraculous is about to take place in your life. I don't think you'll believe it this morning. I said it's about to take place in your life in the name of Jesus. When I was coming, God gave me a word from Psalm 16 verse 6. He said, from today, the lines will begin to fall unto us in pleasant places. And you and I will have a goodly heritage. I thought somebody would shout that amen like a thunder. I was just looking at the New Living Translation there. He said, the Lord has put us in a pleasant land. He said, that's why we have a good inheritance. You you don't understand. When God, Jesus, came, died on the cross, the inheritance he gave you and I is something that this world cannot understand. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything and everyone that is in it. Listen to me, if it belongs unto the Lord, then definitely it belongs to you as well. Wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread, the Bible says you will possess it. I speak over your life right now. In this last Sunday, the 52nd Sunday of the year of our Lord 2015, I, I see you rising beyond this level. I see you breaking forth like never before. I see God elevating you. I see God promoting you in a special way. In the name of Jesus. Receive God's grace to do beyond the ordinary. God told me that I'm releasing grace in this house today. That the grace that I'm releasing in this house, there will be like mind-blowing miracles and testimonies that will begin to happen in the lives of people. If you believe in somebody, shout that amen like the thunder. It's not going to be long. But I know because you are the apple of God's eye, he's jealous over you. That's why the devil cannot take your life. He will try, but he cannot. Why? He said the thousand might be dying by your left. 10,000 by your right, but it will not come near you. Somebody help me tell your neighbor, it will not come near you. Let me tell that your neighbor, I see you heal, I see you delivered, I see you set free, I see you walk like never before, in this process like never before in Jesus' name. God is doing it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, what a God. What, what a mighty God. Glorious God. Glorious God. Awesome God. How great thou art. You are God. Mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your hope. Lord, we bow and worship you. Sing awesome God, awesome God. Sing with me.
in California. Hallelujah. I said, please, 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 please. I want you to celebrate God this morning. All the way from Carson, California. Let's bring up Minister Tina Ezuma. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Let's go. I have 30 minutes. <laughs> we thank God for his faithfulness. The last Sunday, the last Sunday of the year 2015. It's not bad. Oh, it's, not, it's not because we deserve to be here. It's not our right. It's a privilege given to us by God. And we give God all the glory. And I want to use this opportunity to say, thank God. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to use this opportunity as well to thank. Because God will not come down here to do things. He uses men to do it. And I want to use the opportunity to thank my pastor, Pastor Bright Meritian. It's a privilege. When you keep you here, he's yielding his pulpit on the last Sunday. <laughs> it's dangerous. When you yield, so if I make any mistake, you know where to go to. If there's anything you see that I did wrong, you go to him and say, why? But I just thank God. And I want to thank Pastor Anna as well. And I want to God, give God the glory. And I won't take this lightly. It's a privilege. And I thank God for your life. I want to thank the ministers and everybody here. And I say that the God that you serve will never fail you. The God that you serve will be on time God. He will be there on time. In every circumstance, in every situation, he will be there in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's open our Bible to the book of Luke. Luke 13. Luke chapter 13. I'm going to read verse 6 to 9. Luke 13 verse 6 to 9. And I'm reading from NIV version. And I read. And he said, Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. And he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years, for three years now, I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree. I haven't found any. He said, cut it down. Why should he use up the soil? Verse 8 says, sir. The man replied, leave it alone for one more year. I will dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Father, the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. Father, I pray that you use this word, Lord, to do what no man can do but you, Lord. Father, you bless us, O Lord. As we go today, Lord, our life will never remain the same. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bless your people, Lord, and speak through me, Lord. Father, Lord, and let all the glory belongs to you at the end of it all. In Jesus' mighty name I've prayed. Amen. So when we look at this very part of the parables, he talked about a man that had a fig tree. And this man had this fig tree. And for three years, he's been going there looking for fruit. For three years, nothing good was coming out of it. And he looked at the man, gardener taking care of it. He said, the gardener, you know this fig tree is of no use. Let's cut it down. But the gardener said something. Say one more year. The gardener said one more year. One more time. I don't know what you've been doing for the past 
decade, for the past three years, for the past many years. But this is another 2015. It's just like last year, 2014. And they told me it will come to pass. Pastor has prayed. He has prophesied. You have prayed. You have prophesied. But, you know, it's another last Sunday of the month. And I'm about to throw in the towel. I'm about to give up on it. But I came this morning to let you know that God said, just give one more time. God said, just give me one more time. That at the end of 2016, the year of supernatural, the year that is not just an ordinary year, that the results, the solution will be there for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You know what? There's something the man said. He didn't say that he would go to the mountain and pray. He didn't say that he would go and just clock himself in the mountain. He wouldn't say he would fast. He said that I will fertilize it. I will dig it. I will change the soil. He would do something. So, what I came to tell you this morning that for so many years, if you're a nurse here, you will understand what I'm saying. In nursing profession, there's something we call nursing process. When you are 10 years in the nursing, you've gone to your PhD, whatever, there's one thing that you will learn and that's what we use to care for patients. We call it nursing process. But we're going to you change it to kingdom process today. In the nursing process, they have five steps. For every patient that gets into the hospital and not giving it to a nurse, they use these five steps to take care of that patient. The five steps they have, the step one is assessment. Step two is diagnosis. Step three is plan. Step four is inter intervention and implementation. Step five is evaluation. It is something that goes with nursing process. Goes with kingdom process. Because when you look at this very situation, they use a nursing process to get a better result. You can use a kingdom process to get a better result. So that the good thing about nursing process is that it's something continuous. If you do it, you don't get the result. You go back and reevaluate. But there's an approach that we do too. In that nursing, we do something we call holistic care. In holistic care, what holistic care means? Holism means looking at a patient as a whole. In looking at a patient as a whole, you have four approach. You look at that patient, the physical part. You look at the psychological part, you look at the social part, and you look at the spiritual part. And all three, four, four of them is interwoven. You cannot separate them. You can't take the spiritual apart from the physical. And that's what we do in kingdom process. Because sometimes we're looking at things and separating them. But we're going to use this process to approach 2016. When you look at 2016, some people are looking at 2015 and say it's of no value to 2016. But I want you to know that the only way that you know you are making a progress in 2016 is to evaluate 2015 and know what you have done, what you have failed, what's happened. Then from there you'll be able to know how to, what to change in 2016. So the nurses use the assessment. In assessment, they check the history. In assessment, they check the lab results. In assessment, they do look at the subjective and objective tests. The objective tests are the uh, objective and subjective data you gather. 
The objective data is the one that you do the physical. You do you do the vital sign. Temperature is 99.6. That's an objective data. But when you're looking at the subjective data, which is the one that you ask the patient, do you have pain? You say, yes, I have pain. Because you cannot see the pain. It's just the symptoms. Whatever the patient said it is, that's what it is. But today I want you to know that you need to do your own self-assessment. If you get something and begin to do your own self-assessment concerning 2015, what are the things that I did? What are the things that I need to take? You take an inventory of your what you did. Was I coming to church on time? Was I doing my diet? Was I reading my Bible? Was I going to work? Was I a good... Whatever that you know that you did. Was I forgiving? Am I whatever it is? You write it down. That's the assessment part of it. If you do your own assessment, it's not that something that anybody evaluates anybody. Because if you evaluate, evaluate yourself, uh, you can tell yourself lies. You can tell yourself, you know what? Uh, I know that I know uh, that I was expected to be here, but I wasn't where I, uh, I expected to be. My expectations uh, and my experience are quite different. Uh, but I know that uh, these are the things that I did uh, that maybe I could have changed it. Uh, you'll be able to understand uh, the difference between what you did last year and this something that you need to change. Uh, in assessment, that's you gather the data. Uh, they get the lab result. Uh, they get the, uh, the, the x-ray. They get the whatever they need. Uh, what the history. Whatever you get all of them in assessment phase. Then from there, you go to the next phase, which is diagnosing yourself. The diagnosis. You check it and say, okay, Every year, every year, this year I went to 12 parties and I spent $500 each party for Ashebi. So, and I needed to buy a house and I don't know how I'm going to save to this. Okay, last year I didn't go for my vacation. Because of this, where do I need to? Whatever it is, last year I went, I, 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 I usually wake up by 7 o'clock. It's always late for me to do anything. I can't even pray. But maybe I was going to bed late. So maybe 11 o'clock, let me do 10.30 so that I will wake up by 6.30 and pray for about 30 minutes before. But whatever it is, maybe I wanted to lose 15 pounds, but I was able to gain 5 pounds. So what am I doing wrong? I was, maybe this year, last year I was eating uh, whatever chicken, uh, fried chicken. Uh, but this year, maybe I will start boiling my chicken, broil or whatever, bake it, cook it or whatever. So whatever changes, this is the time you get it. Uh, so and you go to the next level, which is diagnosis. Uh, you have seen what you have did wrong. Then you diagnose yourself. Uh, I feel guilty. I'm unforgiving. Uh, I've been binging. I've been eating a lot. Whatever it is. That you give yourself that diagnosis. Then you go to the next one. The next one is plan. You know a lot of us don't plan. Whatever I'm saying today, I'm, I'm part of it. Don't think that because she's here, she's free. No, I'm not. So plan. What plan do I have? Are you the one that just walked into 2016 and I just crossed over to the other side? Did you plan what you want? I don't mean that if you plan, I plan to buy a house. If you don't buy a house, nobody will beat you up. If I plan to lose weight, if you don't lose weight, nobody. But within you, you have a plan. When you have a plan and prioritize your plan, then it will help you lead you to the activity that you need to do. It will lead you to the way you, way you have to walk this year. So you plan. In nothing, we do a short-term plan and a long-term plan. Short term, he said, at the end of today, this patient will be able to be free of pain. But nobody will not pay your salary because the patient didn't, wasn't free of pain. Whether he's free of pain or not, your salary will be paid. 
So what you need to do is that you put a plan and you walk towards the plan. So when you walk towards the plan and the patient didn't get, you go back and reevaluate your plan. What did I do that made this patient not to? Because at the intervention, you put the plan and go to the intervention and implementation stage. When we were to the intervention and implementation stage, that's where you call the doctor. That's where you get the medication. That's where you do everything you need to do. But this intervention place is you use whatever assessment to go get to diagnosis. You use whatever diagnosis to get to the plan. You use whatever you gather from assessment and plan and everything. That's what you do for your intervention and implementation. So you look at 2015. From this 2015, you evaluated that you find what is the problem. Why am I having this problem? Why am I not losing this weight? Why am I not saving enough? Why am I not doing good in whatever? When you get maybe small steps, small, you don't have to be big. A short-term plan. Maybe the first three months. This is what, where I want to go. This is what I want to do. After three months, you reevaluate and see, does it work? Maybe do I? I was expecting that I just needed to save $500 in three months. But I ended up saving $1,500. So let me jump up again. Maybe the next quarter, I will do this. The same thing with your Bible. I plan to. Read the whole book of um, uh, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in three months. I didn't finish it. Okay, maybe it's too much for me. Let me just go down. But it's your own pace. You see if your goal is to be met. It doesn't matter if you met the goal or not. But you keep reevaluating it. So when you finish implementation, you go to evaluation. Evaluation is when you really go back to evaluate the plan you put on the ground, the interventions and implementations that you have used to achieve this. Will it work? Did it work? What about a little adjustment? Because in nothing, sometimes the lab results came back. When you came into the hospital, the lab results show some negative things. But now that you have been there and taking some medications, the lab results has changed. So what you need to do, I don't need this anymore. I don't need to be a baby anymore. I don't need to be on this stage anymore. You move yourself up. That's what it is. So let me tell you something. This 2016, we are not just going as usual. We are not going the way we used to go. We just walk into her on that day, the 31st. Uh, pastor will say receive it uh. you just say I receive it uh. I receive my promotion uh. God will prophesy on you and say next year you know what is going on uh. next year you buy your house uh. next year you buy a new car next year your wife is going to have, uh, open a business uh. and everything that they said uh, you receive it uh. but the one the, the gardener said uh, he said give me one more year let me do something uh. are you ready to do something uh? are you ready to do is something different uh, from what you usually do because he said there's only a madman uh, that wants to do the same thing and get a different result. Uh. You need to do something. Uh. We need to change some situations. Uh. We need to change some things. Uh. Just like they said uh, there are people that I need to delete. Uh. Those people that pull me down. Uh. There are people that I need to connect to. Uh. There are some business I need to take. Uh. There are some things I need to do. Uh. There are some time uh, that uh, this phone, uh, this phone is wonderful. Uh, this social media is wonderful. This being on internet is wonderful. But is it a valuable time for me? You give a time to wait. Uh, I stay so many two hours uh, 
just going her, uh, flipping from uh, whatever one her uh, to either to this one her. Uh, but now I'm giving it time her. Uh, I'm not going to stay there uh, for any hours her. Uh, because sometimes what wake you up uh, is not God her. Uh, what wake you up uh, is not because you're praying her, uh, communicating to, with God her. Uh, what wake you up is a phone call her. Uh, My man her, uh, what are you doing today? Uh, we have a place to go. Uh, just let, let, let's let maybe talk to you today. Uh, let me talk to myself too. You're is waking you up in the morning. Huh? Is it a phone call? Huh? What kind of phone call wakes you up? Huh? Is it a phone call? Huh? Just somebody t- t- see you, telling you there's somewhere huh? we need to go. There's a party. There's clothes that we need to buy. Huh? There's something huh? that is not going to increase you. That's what you want to do. Huh? 2016. Huh? If you're ready, get ready. There'll be changes. Huh? There'll be promotion. Huh? There'll be elevation. Huh? There'll be some Something uh, spectacular, supernatural uh, that will happen in our life, uh, but it's not gonna happen uh, by just sitting uh, and waiting for that tree every month. Uh, you see this tree, uh, I'm waiting, I'm going to look for fruit in it uh, because there's not gonna be any fruit if we don't change the way we do things. It's in the Bible, I didn't put it there, and it was Jesus speaking speaking to every one of us. What are you going to do this year? You don't come in the middle of the year and say, I want to change this. The budget for 2016, Bugari already put in it. 2.31 billion. That's the one they're going to share in the government. So they put it down there already. If you, if you want Obama to be coming 2016 January and begin to give you what he's going to do, it's not going to work. If you want to do something, 2016, you, the people that go, businesses have planned, yeah, putting everything they need to implement, whatever they need to do, 2016 is already in ground. I'm not saying that you can't have some emergency money. I'm not saying that you can't put out some emergency things. But the core things that you needed to do is already on the ground. Don't wait for 31st December. Don't wait for January 1st. If there's anything that you want to be on the ground, this is the time for us to do it. If there's anything that you want, changes you want in our life, this is the time, the best time for us to do it. And you can't do it without checking the history of the last year. You cannot change the one uh, that is coming without knowing uh, how was the last year? How was 2015? How did I do 2015? If you know how you did 2015, you know what to change. If you know what to change, that will bring the increase that you need. That we all need. Because as we go to John 15, they say God is the gardener. If you go to think, let me see John 2015. I was reading it and I say, the gardener here, God is giving us another chance. He's giving us another chance. Let me look at it. When you look at 15, John 15, 1, he said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cut off every branches in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit and he prunes. So that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. <laughs> he said, remain in me as I also remain in you. So no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Saying, God is the gardener. He's the one that said, you know, get connect. Connect with me. Connect with God. I talk about the holistic care approach. You cannot take out the, the psychological, physical. Because if my body is weak, I don't know how I'm going to be able to handle the spiritual. If your psychological is rich, <clears throat> because what? <laughs> if your body is weak, you cannot. <laughs> Thank you. 
Excuse me. So, the psychological part of it, sometimes we look at, <laughs> I always tell them, the psychological part of it is this. Sometimes we look at people and we said, how can this person commit suicide? I'm not saying it's the mind of that person. We cannot separate the mind of person and say that that person spiritually will be high. But some people, you can't take your level to match anybody's level. Everybody have their own level. Because sometimes you're looking at somebody, I'm looking at some, you know, because of the kind of job I do, I see this all the time. Before I used to look at it, I say, how can you be thinking about killing yourself? But when I look, the person is not reasoning the way you reason. The person is not seeing the way you're seeing. So sometimes you really need to bring that person because they say the spiritual and the physical and the psychological and the social, they're all interwoven. You need to bring that person to the level. They will understand that God is the answer. Do you take away the social part? What trick that can make a forest? You need, I need you, you need me. We need each other. Because if we come here today, nobody is here but pastor and, um, pastors and maybe the ministers. It's not of no use. So we need each other. And there's something that I want to end with. Because we now know that God is the gardener. God is the one that has the whole answer. There's something in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. He said, no. In, no, no, in all these things, we are more than a conqueror. In all these, know that we are more than a conqueror. Through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor, dem nor demons, neither the present for, nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is the Christ. In Christ Jesus our Lord. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. One put one a time. If we know nothing can separate us from this love of God, we are a conquer whatever that is devil has placed in our life. I just want you to know one thing. That when you self-assess yourself, when you diagnose yourself, when you put the plan in place, when you implement the intervention and intervention, Intervene and implement whatever interventions you have. And evaluate yourself and find out that you didn't get the results. My brother, go back, reevaluate, Add something, take out something. Do whatever you need to do. But next year, 2016, you see that fruit, that tree must be a fruit. 2016, that tree must bear a fruit. When the owner comes into the fruit, come under that tree. It's not going to just go without a fruit. Because this 2016, we're not going like we used to go. We're not going like procrastination. We're not going with anger because things, sometimes we get angry at God. Why? I've been praying and it didn't happen. It was the time my daughter asked me a question one day. He said, Mommy, how do you keep calm when things are working a wire? When the things you prayed for, God is not doing it. How do you deal with this? Because when we were in a plane to Paris, the, the, the plane was, the turbulence was too much. And I was sleeping. She woke me up and said, Why are you sleeping? Mommy, don't you see turbulence? I said, my daughter, you know what? Where I am, there's nothing I can do. I don't know if there's anything you can do than to bother yourself. 
I say, where I am now, I just say, God, you are, you are the one taking care of. You're, it's all about you. I reminded him that I have eight kids in the house waiting for me. That you are not going to do anything but take me home. So when she told me and he looked at it and he said, I didn't answer her that because I said, why? What will you do? I just, I just went back to sleep. And again, he asked me this question again. There's something that happened and she said, mom, how can you just keep calm when things are going? I said, Louis, I gave her one scenario. I said, the scenario I will give you is this. If you want to buy a house and that house is 500,000 and you go and the, 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 person, the, real, the realtor told you what to bring. He told you bring your, father, your grandmother's blood, bring your great grandfather's DNA. He told you to bring everything they asked you to bring and you brought them and you handed it over to realtor. The realtor submitted to Bank of America. I say, what else are you doing? If you stay awake sleepless nights waiting, thinking that, uh, how are they going to are they going to approve it? Are they not going to approve it? It wouldn't help you. I say, what happened to me when I submitted? You did all that you have to do. If you know there's anything left, you go do it and submit it to the guy and you say, Bank of America, you take it to God and say, God, you know how much much I need this house. Uh. God, you know that I need it. Uh. Begin to change the heart of the Bank of America. Begin to change the West Fargo. Begin to change the financial companies uh, that is going to give me this loan. Uh. And when you give it to God, uh, you go and sleep like a baby. When you call you back, uh, the bank, the realtor calls you uh, and say he failed. Uh. He said, glory be to God. Uh. I don't know, but I know there's something better. Uh. There's a better house I wear. There's a better house that God stepped for me. That's how I deal with it. Uh. I know that God said uh, Tina, wait. Uh, that 500 is not what I want to give you. I want to give you a better and bigger one. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, and I put it in my pocket. Uh, I take my everything uh, and wait for another one, but if you stay and stay, you stay sleepless, you stay, you don't eat, thinking that things will change, God will do what he wants to do, and when you are a child of God, and you pray to him and give it to him, he will do it, and I pray this day, I pray today that God that we serve, the God of Rema House, the one that I pass to pray every day, the one that you pray that wake up your awake, he will never fail you, come 2016, we are moving in a style. Uh, we are moving in a different way, in a different dimension. Uh, things will change for us. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, God will do it. Uh, stand up and begin to tell her, God has done it. Uh, receive it. Uh, receive your blessing. Uh, receive your miracle. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you just jam those hands onto the Lord and let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. There's something you read that really struck me. And this is what it is. She said something there and in verse 6 she said, And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree. You can sit down please. In his vineyard. And he called and sought fruit thereon and he found none. Ladies and gentlemen. If there is anything this year that you have sought and it seems as if you have not received it, just be rest assured that God does not come late. Yeah. It's not a late comer like human beings. Can I have an amen? Yeah. It's not a late comer like human beings. It will definitely bring these words to come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. He said he was looking for fruits but he found none on it. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this tree. We have come to the Roman house seeking greatness, seeking things. I don't know what you are seeking for. You know, I wrote one day, I said, One woman came here, looked around, and she said, Oh, there's no husband material in this place. Packed her back and said she was going. I said, If it is husband that you came for, the day you get the husband, that is the day you do not come again. Most people come into the presence of God looking for diverse kinds of things. But my question here is this. If God gives you whatever you are looking for right now, what will you do? 
will you serve him? Because he said, it's only the people that serve me that I will bless their bread and their waters and I will take sicknesses away from the midst of them. And this man began to say, behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this tree. And he said, I found none. All of a sudden, what he said is cut it down. Cut it down. And he said, why encumbrate it the, the ground itself? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say something here today. There might be a, there might be expectations of expectations. Even the Bible have said something. He said the expectation of the righteous is that they shall not be cut off. I believe God's word, and I hold on to God's word. Whatever it is that God has spoken to you, that He has showed you, I tell you by God, it will always come to pass. He is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that will repent. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, definitely he will bring it to pass. Let me prophesy over each and everybody here today. Everything God has shown you, everything God has spoken to you, I tell you, he will surely bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. 2015 looks as if it's coming to an end. But your life has not come to an end. Your expectation should not come to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you lay your hands upon, the Bible says they shall prosper. And I speak over your life today by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you have been asking from God, He will release it unto you in the name of Jesus. She said something. And after three years, the man told her, the man who was dressing the ground. Because you know what? It's easy for somebody who is not working to come and criticize something. It's very, very easy. Somebody who is not doing anything at all, just sitting down, folding their arms, looking at you, it's easy for them to criticize you. It's easy for them to criticize what you are doing, what God is doing in your life. But the man who is stealing the ground, the man who is laboring, the man who is working every day will tell you that, listen, why I'm working is because I know that this thing will get better. Somebody is not listening to me. Why I'm working is that I know that God will still give me elevation, give me promotion on that job uh, very soon. But people are looking from the outside and telling you why are you doing what you are doing? You're just wasting your time. Uh. You're just doing this, you're just doing that. But the man who was stealing the ground, he told the man who was waiting for the fruit, he told him what you need to do is give me one more year. Give this thing one more year. Somebody you are about to give up. Somebody you are about to throw in the power. But the word that came today is that give it another year. I tell you by God, whatever it is that you have been trusting God for, give it another year. That's what God is saying today. And as he's saying it, I know that if you say, oh Lord, I release myself. Uh, let me begin to till the ground. Uh, like this man is stealing it as well. Uh, as I'm laboring, I know that there will be profit coming out of it. Uh, as I'm laboring, I know that something is about to change uh, in the spirit concerning me. And I know that the lines uh, will begin to fall onto me in please have places and i will definitely have a, a goodly heritage god is lifting somebody here today god is lifting somebody here today your name ladies and gentlemen is about to ring a bell uh, in quarters that matter in this life in the name. somebody's not listening i said your name uh, right now is ringing a bell in the quarters that matter right now in the name of jesus don't throw in the tower wait a little while uh, wait a little while uh, you will see god uh, bring all things together and you will begin to see increase like never before in the name of Jesus. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this you guys sit down. That same word that you spoke this man, Samson mighty man of valor had everything all the power God gave to him but all of a sudden the man found himself messing up on the laps of a woman they shaved his hair which was his glory. They shaved his hair where his power was. That's why you will see the Bible says, Arise, shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord. When the glory, ladies and gentlemen, is shaved away, there is nothing that will be attracted to that person. So Samson at the end of the day, listen to what happened. When they shaved his head and he became powerless, they used him as a toy. They used him as a plaything. Listen to me today. If you are here and you are meddling your hands in sin, that is why things are not working the way they should work, ladies and gentlemen. If you are still dilly dallying, ah, pastor is not there. Pastor, nobody is seeing me. I am doing it behind closed doors. 
listen to me. God is seeing you behind those closed doors. Huh? And that's why you have not seen the breakthrough. That's why you have not seen the increase. Huh? You owe so much. Huh? You owe people. You lie to take their money. You lie to swindle them. Huh? At the end of the day, you want greatness and increase. It will never come. Huh? Listen to me today. It comes to a point, Samson, when his glory was shaven away. Why? Because he was meddling in things. Huh? When he was going to get married to that girl, God, they, 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 sorry, the parents told him, you cannot get married to this kind of people. Samson, by the time he was going, God was giving him signs along the way. Don't do this. Lions came. He tore them with his bare hands. Why? Because God gave him that power. So that things came out and the parents were there to warn him, don't do it. He went ahead and he did it. But at the end of the day, see what happened to him. All his glory was gone. All his hair was gone. Where the locks, the power that God gave to him was gone away. But one thing that was there, when they used him as a plaything and they brought him into the town square and all of a sudden his hands got onto two pillars one word that he told god he said give me one more chance ladies and gentlemen he told god one more time again give me this power so that i'll be able to destroy these people listen to me today whatever has been destroying your destiny and you are liking it today from today you will not like them anymore in the name of jesus let me say it again uh, whatever has been destroying your destiny and you are loving it and you are liking it uh, and it's like you are living in it right now god will miraculously yank you away from it uh, you will begin to hate them right now in the name of jesus what samson loved uh, that was what destroyed his destiny whatever you love uh, will not destroy your destiny in the name of jesus you will love the right things uh, you will love the right things uh, you will love the right things uh, as this year is coming to an end you will love the right things uh, in the name of jesus he said one more time give me this strength lord i'm not going to throw in the tower these people will not make a mockery of you lord they will not make a mockery of my god people are asking you where is your god they will not make a mockery of this God anymore. He said one more time. Ah, give it one more year. Give it one more second. Give it one more month. Ah, give it one more day. Lord, and all of a sudden the Lord granted his request. And he pulled those pillars. And everybody who were there died. The Bible says something. He said the people that Samson killed in that one day, they were much more than the people that he killed in his lifetime. Let me say it again. The people that Samson killed in that one day, one moment, that one minute that God gave him back that strength was more, far more than the people that he killed in a lifetime. Listen to me as we are entering to 2016. Uh, the things you could not achieve uh, all these years that you are in America, you will achieve it in 2016. Uh, you didn't hear me. I said you will achieve it uh, in 2016 in the name of Jesus. It's one more time. Give it one more time. We know people who started with us and are not here with us anymore. We know people who just felt that you know what, nothing good is coming out anymore. And they walked away. Listen to me. Life is full of people who were at the verge of their breakthrough and they turned back and they began to go. Somebody I want to talk to you today. You are at the verge of your breakthrough. That's why it seems as if things are getting tighter. Things are getting very difficult. Why? You are just at the verge of your breakthrough. You are about to take a turn. You are about to take a corner, ladies and gentlemen. And where the devil will not be able to see you anymore. God told me today while I'm coming. He said, speak to them and let us remove every stumbling block to their progress. Every stumbling block to their progress. That's what we want to remove right now. And I pray who are that old great mountain that has been before you? The Bible says that mountain shall become a plain. Yeah. You know, I told you 2016, God told me it's the year of the supernatural. If you go to read Zechariah chapter 4 and you start from verse 6, he says it's not by power nor by might, but he says it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. He continues there and he says, Who are thou, O great mountain? Before the Remites, here in LA. Who are thou, O great mountain? Before my family. Who are thou, O great mountain? Before my ministry. He said, That mountain shall become a plain. I came today to speak to everybody here today. Whatever has been the stumbling blocks of your life, 
they are removed right now in the name of Jesus. The way you are saying this, amen, I don't believe you. Whatever has been the stumbling blocks that have not made you to get to the height that God wants you to get to, they are removed right now in the name of Jesus. Look at Zechariah 3. The Bible talks about the high priest Joshua. And the high priest Joshua is a brand plucked out of fire. But the Bible says, but he had on a filthy garment. Filthy garment. Father today in this house, every filthy garment oh god let it go please help me say amen listen if you say we have no sins you are we are liars and there's no truth in us i want every filthy garment in your life lord every filthy garment oh god in my life remove them right now in the name of jesus i want to see your power i want to see your glory i want to see you oh god this year as we cross into 2016 that's what we want to see thank you lord for 2015 we still have four more days to go it's not over until it is over god can still come right now that which you have been looking for that which has eluded you up until now god now says you know what this is the time to give it to you a last minute miracle is about to happen somebody say amen i said a last minute miracle is about to happen it's about to happen it's about to happen it's about to happen to you right now now, in the name of Jesus, whatever it is that I've been drawing you back, uh, I cut you off from them. Uh, begin to go forward, begin to go forward, begin to go forward. In the name of Jesus, Isaiah 44. The Bible says, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill that they shall be made low. Every mountain and hill before you that has not made you to rise to where God wants you to rise, they are brought low today. They are brought low today in the name of Jesus. When Lazarus died, one thing that they did was that they took him, put him there, and they took a stone and they rolled it over him. Jesus took, they took a stone rolled it over him jesus told them i really like jesus jesus was a very boastful man he told them on the third day i will rise again uh, you didn't hear me very very boastful people are there wanting to destroy his life kill him do everything he was still telling them that listen this temple will bring it down but in three days i will build back this temple again and he told them on the third day i will rise again somebody here the way you are speaking is not good God said, I should tell you, you need to begin to speak big. You need to begin to speak the way God has seen you. Tell them that, listen, though I am this way today, I know that something will break in my life. Uh, I will get to higher heights uh, like never before in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil and his cause uh, and everybody that cares to listen uh, that today things might be the way they are. But come back, come back, come back. Uh, this same time next year, give it one more year. This same time next year, the way you are addressing me today, you will address me properly the way you are addressing me today by the time you see me next year you will address me properly you will say ah my honorable well you will oh god somebody's not listening to me by the time you begin to speak uh, you will not understand what it is uh. listen to me this level today but by the time you come next year you would have seen this level will change help me look at your neighbor tap your neighbor say your level don't change you tell your neighbor my level don't change uh. speak to me well Speak to me well. You need to begin to talk to me well. From today in the name of Jesus. Whatever stumbling blocks that they are. God will remove those stumbling blocks. In the name of Jesus. You know why? Because God appears. When God appears. Ladies and gentlemen. He appears like the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when you see a lion. Help me put Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 30 up there. Proverbs 30, 30. When you see a lion. And when God appears like the lion of the tribe of Judah, all stumbling blocks to advancement must scatter. He says, a lion mighty among beasts who retreats before nothing. You are not listening to me. Ah, when you are the son of a lion, why are you behaving this way? You are a daughter of a lion. Why are you behaving this way? The lion is the strongest among beasts. And the Bible says he turneth not away from any. No matter whoever they are, 
let Goliath show up because David, ladies and gentlemen, was a son of the lion of Judah. He stood before Goliath and he told him, you are circumcised Philistine. People were looking at him. How can you be talking to this giant like this? But he knows who was backing him up. Listen to me today. Who is backing you up is greater than those people who are fighting against you. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Victory is sure for you and I. In 2016, victory is sure for you and I. In the name of Jesus. One more. One more year. Give it one more year. Give it one more year. When God appears like the lion of the tribe of Judah, every stumbling blocks to your progress, they are taken away. They are taken away. They are taken away. They are taken away. Listen to me. What are stumbling blocks? Stumbling blocks are invisible hindrances which do not allow one to move forward. Any invisible hindrance that has not allowed you to move forward, uh, let the fire of God consume them right now. Consume them right now. Consume them right now. Consume them right now. I say every invisible hindrance which has not allowed you to move forward, uh, let the fire of God, uh, let it consume them now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stumbling blocks can hinder people spiritually, materially, and even financially. They can. Are there stumbling blocks that have hindered you financially in 2015? Those stumbling blocks, they are removed. I said they are removed. I said they are removed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let me put up Joshua chapter 5 and verse 9. I pray this prayer. We'll take the communion and we'll go. Wow, what a day. 52 Sundays. God kept me. God kept me. I went to Nigeria and I was preaching morning, night. I was telling myself my body is weak but every time I stand there they give me microphone like 9 2 p.m. we are still there ministering to people laying hands on people prophesying over people when I get back to my hotel room it's like something leaves me and I'm just there like that the next time they will come and carry me 7 p.m. again by the time they carry me we don't get back until maybe 12, 12 midnight and I looked at myself for 4 days I did that for 12 solid days walking around the country and I told God I said Lord left for me I am weak but I've seen something that with you there is strength then he said can you not remember where I said that men might be saying there is a casting down but you will say there is a lifting up and he said there is a song that says let the weak Say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. You might be weak in your body today. But keep saying I'm strong. Let me tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor I'm strong. Tell your neighbor I'm even stronger than when I started 2015. Tap that your neighbor say my faith is stronger than even when I started 2015. When God carries you on his own wings. He carries you on his own wings. There was one I went into Manchester the last Wednesday before the Thursday I came. I went to the man's church. I didn't even know I was real tired and I didn't know what I was saying. But the man, after I finished, just came on and he said, you know what? Let me tell you the truth. I've not seen this man. I've not spoken to him today. I don't know. Either. He said, because I was like reading people's mails one after the other. I will call this one. I will talk to this one. He said, it's like all the problems that they had. That is like I came and I read their mails. happen to you don't worry just close your eyes i'm not removing anything from my pocket i don't have please don't worry there's no problem but i want you to see yourself that from today god take over you want to say that to yourself and say to god that lord from today take over 
I have done it with my own power. I have done it with my own strength, but not take over. Let that be your prayer today. Take over. Take over my marriage. Take over that my husband is hurt. Take over the heart of my wife. Take over this ministry, Lord. It's not by power. Let the supernatural start. Let the supernatural begin to do the extraordinary in our midst. Lord, take over my ministry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Lord, take over. That's what I want you to know. God, take over. Take over 52 Sundays in a year. God has given word over upon word upon word. There are days that we needed to preach several solid days all through the week. God has given strength for it. 12 days of glory is coming again from January to January the 8th. God will definitely take over. Passover night on Thursday night, God will definitely take over. God is the one that gives strength for all those kind of things. Ask the Lord to take over your life. You think that you are the one watching over those children? Tell God, take over my children. Take over their lives. Take over their hearts. Let not the world take away the hearts of my children. Go ahead today. Take over, Lord. Take over my academics. Take over the academics of my children. Your business, take over it, Lord. Uh, Lord, come and take over. Come and be the chairman of my business, uh, of my career, of my giftings. Uh. Lord, come and take over. Not just that door to be alone. Lord, take over, Lord. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over, take over, take over, Lord. Take over, Yeri Gabashiada. Take over, Librogo Sianda Gete, Yegibo Sianda Kata. Lord, take over. This 52nd Sunday of the year 2015, the last Sunday of this year, we surrender all. We surrender all. Lord, take over. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 9. Please put it up there. Please put it up there. He said, this day, I will roll away. You can look up now. The Lord take over. But go home and let that be your prayer. And he said, and the Lord said unto Joshua, the Lord is saying unto you, the Lord is saying unto Bright. He said, this day, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. We are for the name of this place. This house is called Gilgal unto this day. Gilgal simply means gal gal and that means roll and roll every reproach in your life I say it again every reproach in your business every reproach in your marriage God will roll it away in the name of Jesus he said this day have I rolled away every reproach concerning your health God has rolled it away in the name of Jesus I'm rolling it away I'm rolling it away I'm rolling it away Every stumbling block to your advancement. Every stumbling block to your elevation. Every stumbling block to your promotion and breakthrough. They are rolled away. I said they are rolled away. They are rolled away. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout at them like a thunder. Lord, I pray for everybody here. Are there people here that you have done good to? You send money. And they use that money against you. You send clothes. They use those clothes against you. They say, does she think she's better than us? I am standing today as a prophet in this house. Whosoever it is that you have done good to. And whatever materials that you have sent to them. Money materials, whatever it is. That they want to use it against you. I stand today. Before 2015 is over. Judgment is declared. Yeah. Oh, the way you're saying this, I don't believe you. I said before 2015 is over, judgment is declared in the name of Jesus. You know why? As you get into 2016, because judgment is declared.